Welcome to On Texas Football. It's another little Saturday update. I've got CJ Vogel here with me. Uh, CJ, you were out in uh, Lockhart today checking out KJ Lacey, the uh, quarterback, young quarterback out of Alabama, who was in town uh, for a seven on seven tournament uh, earlier today. I'll get your thoughts about that in a minute. Uh, but first, uh, we got to talk about Coach Steve Sarkeesian and his uh, agreement to a four year contract extension. Now, that contract extension takes his current deal through 2020 of, uh, or 20, excuse me, 2030. Uh, so it's really seven years more on his agreement right now, or seven years total uh, left on his agreement. Uh, it's a big win for the University of Texas, a big win for Steve Sarkeesian uh, as well. Uh, Kevin Eltife, the chair of the Board of Regents uh, and the university put out a, uh, a statement. I want to read a little bit of that here. What a year it was in 2023, Eltai said, winning the Big 12, final Big 12 championship and taking us to the college football playoff for the first time. And we know the best is yet to come. Coach Sark has brought the pride and passion back in our program. We're so fortunate to have him and we're looking forward to many more exciting years to come. Uh, I tell you what, Steve Sarkeesian was not the only one that, all right, Eltai was not the only one to say something. I really, really liked what uh, Sark had to say himself. Uh, we're thrilled with what we've been able to accomplish and proud of the culture we've built, Sark said, and the way our players have grown both on and off the field. But we're just getting started. CJ, a uh, big, big moment for Texas. Uh, obviously, we knew this was coming whenever he passed on the Alabama job. Uh, but what are your initial takeaways on, on this uh, situation for Texas? I love the comments from Kevin Eltife. He's brought back the pride and the passion to the University of Texas football program. And I think we absolutely saw that this year with Texas finishing number three in the country, uh, making a trip to the college football playoff, you know, winning the final Big 12. That was what Texas fans have been longing for. It's been a long time since that has been, you know, really something that Texas fans can can be very prideful about with their, their football program. And like they said, I think there's a, a lot of work to do, but I think they're certainly on the right path to accomplishing, you know, the bigger picture, which is winning a national championship. And right now the pieces are in place for that to be in the consideration down the road. Very well, exciting. Say, you were at, you were with a recruit. I was going to ask, what's the impact on recruits? And you just happen to be with maybe the top recruit in the class of 2025 already. That's KJ Lacey, the, the quarterback. What did he have to say about the extension? Oh, he was smiling ear to ear when I brought it up. You know, he was very excited about it. I actually talked to him a little bit about why Texas got involved with him. Was it Steve Sarkeesian? Was there, you know, something about Texas that had piqued his interest previously? He said, no, it was it was Coach Sark. It was what he can bring to the table in terms of being a quarterback developer, an offensive play caller, and obviously a head coach. So when he heard that Sarkeesian was locked up for four plus three, he was excited. He was thrilled. He, he had a big smile on his face. He said, you know, that's, Great news. Very excited for it moving forward. He, you know, is, is looking forward to getting back to campus for uh, a celebration and a toast with, with Coach Sarkeesian in terms of, you know, that, that contract extension. He's due back in two weeks, right? He, you said he spent some time there this morning with the coaching staff on campus. He's back in two weeks with his uh, high school teammate, Ryan Williams, the, the wide receiver uh, out of Alabama uh, that is set to be in on campus that weekend for his official visit. Uh, but on campus this weekend are the four B's, uh, Bond, Isaiah Bond, wide receiver, University of Alabama, Aaron Butler, wide receiver, Calabasas, California. He's already signed with Texas. Uh, Silas Bolden, wide receiver out of Oregon State, and Kendrick Blackshire, uh, a linebacker out of the University of Alabama by way of Duncanville High School. Um, look, Bond, there is no doubt he is considered uh, one of the elite players in the portal uh, caught 48 balls for uh, Alabama, was their number one deep ball threat uh, by far. Just a tremendous overall player uh, for them. What were your thoughts about uh, these guys coming in? Uh, Bond made a beeline for Texas as soon as he went in the portal. That has to make, be of some importance, especially with Texas starting classes this coming Tuesday. Oh, absolutely. I'm not one to, to read through the tea leaves without having a lot behind it, but that is something that is very noteworthy. And, you know, in, in speaking with KJ Lacey, he, his eyes even kind of perked up that Texas was making a move with Isaiah Bond as quickly as they were. Uh, obviously, Lacey was on campus this morning and even mentioned, you know, we had to leave. It was him and his 7-on-17 that stopped by. He said, I got to say hello to some of the coaches, some familiar faces, 
But you could tell they were gearing up for the guys that were coming in on campus right after. And Isaiah Bond was number one on that list. He said right as they were uh, departing, coaches were heading out to go greet and meet with Isaiah Bond. That was something we traded back and forth right away to just say, hey, you know, if Texas is able to add a guy like that to this offense, things are going to be exciting in 2024. Uh, so it certainly is important that Texas is getting the first crack at him. You would like a quick early decision. Texas has been very precise in the portal, and this is no different. I think Texas sees a need, they see a hole, and they see a guy with Isaiah Bond with the skill set that he brings to the table that can immediately get on the field and be an impact playmaker. Um, I want to stay, stick with the portal news real quick, uh, if we would, uh, right now. Uh, Texas, uh, apparently, uh, C.J. Daniels, the uh, wide receiver out of Liberty that visited last weekend, uh, word is he is committed to LSU. There are reports out of Baton Rouge that he is expected to do that later today. Uh, and then another one that, that I think is important, the cousin of Manny Muhammad, Jabbar Muhammad, the first team all Pac-12 cornerback uh, for the University of Washington, is in the portal, uh, put himself in earlier this week. Texas, we are told, has shown some interest. Oregon in Dallas today, uh, trying to woo him a little bit. Uh, Texas, a possibility, though, here. Uh, Jabbar Muhammad could go a number of different ways if he, if he goes to Texas. It's very interesting because we're still waiting uh, as well on Jade Barron, uh, the star uh, uh, nickelback out of uh, Pflugerville that started for three years now for Texas. He has yet to announce his decision whether he's going pro or staying in school another year. If he stays in school another year instead of going pro, okay, uh, then that may be, is Jabbar Muhammad too much? Or do you go after Jabbar Muhammad no matter what if you're the University of Texas? Of course, they've already grabbed Andrew Makuba out of the portal. Uh, he's the Clemson a nickel back. So, but yes, they all have position versatility is what we've talked about. It's possible that Muhammad stays at corner and someone like Terrence Brooks or Manny Muhammad plays nickel. You, you just have to wonder what's going on here. But look, uh, Texas showing uh, very, a lot of interest in an elite defensive back. They absolutely are. And I think that's one of those issues that you figure out the minute that you get all of them on campus and, and ready to get rolling for spring football. You can never have too many playmakers. You can never have too many defensive backs. And so uh, with Jabbar Muhammad specifically, there is familiarity there, obviously, with Manny Muhammad on campus. Uh, his cousin, Billy Walton, is also on campus as well, down in the defensive end uh, port of the defense. But with Jabbar it has you know great experience and great production on the field. He was an all-pack 12 cornerback this year. Uh, Texas fans are obviously familiar with the performance he can bring on big stages, as we've seen uh, in the Sugar Bowl this past season. Uh, two weeks from now, or two weeks ago even. Uh, I'd like the idea of both Barron and Muhammad, you know, returning this 2024 uh, defense specifically for the reason that you can plug and play and add, you know, very reliable experience anywhere. Uh, I do think if Jabbar Muhammad is added to this defense, it kind of limits where you can throw uh, Jade Barron. And I think that is a bit of the consideration in which, if Barron does return to Texas, he does want some looks outside of that nickel spot. He wants, you know, that those opportunities out wide. How often or how, you know, viable is a is is that, you know, kind of pathway for Barron if Muhammad is added? I'm not sure. But like you said, it does open up the idea of moving, you know, Terrence Brooks around the secondary to a spot where more athleticism and more production can get on the field at the same time. And that alone is worth taking both guys back to Texas. All right, let's talk about the defensive line position opening quickly. A uh, couple of things going on there. One is the guys who are incoming uh, to Texas this year. Uh, and then one is the deep, and the second is the defensive line coach. Uh, we're told that uh, Alex January is expected to uh, make his, ch uh, to check in and enroll at the University of Texas uh, tomorrow morning. He's expected to do that. However, DeAndre Robinson out of Orlando's Jones was also a midterm enrollee. He is not expected to as of right now. So that's a, that's a big move from a recruiting perspective because Texas signed just three big tack, defensive tackles in this class, January, Robinson, and Melvin Hills. Melvin Hills is not a midtermer, so he has some time to wait. But Robinson right now uh, on a little bit of accelerated time frame as, as is January, uh, but uh, we'll see where that goes uh, with it all right now. I do want to add this based on what I'm being told right now, Oscar Giles is a name to watch in the defensive line coach position. He was at Wyoming this past year. Of course, he's had two terms 
as defensive line coach at the University of Texas. Uh, Oscar's a name to watch, as well as Rod Wright, the special assistant to the defensive line coach for the Houston Texans, who's been around the country, coached for Jeff Trailer at UTSA for a little while, then coached down at Miami, been in the NFL now for a little bit. Uh, he belongs uh, in that discussion group, along with Freddie Roach at Alabama, who we'll see if he decides or is asked to stay with Kalen DeBoer at uh, at Alabama, uh, then Ed Orgeron, uh, and I want to also mention, continue to mention Zarnell Fitch uh, out of Texas Tech. Those are some of the guys that I've heard at this point in time uh, that are real possibilities. Uh, CJ, uh, the the loss, the potential loss of DeAndre Robinson. Uh, he's not. He wasn't expected to play a bunch this year, but you want to get those big guys in the pipeline, right? They, you want to get the. You don't want to lose numbers there. Plus, Texas lost out on Jamari Caldwell uh, to Oregon in the transfer portal uh, yesterday. Uh, the impact of that, is that a concern in your opinion? It is. It is uh, a concern. You never want to be light in the trenches, especially when you're entering the SEC. We've talked about it over the years, how impressive the Texas offensive line room has transformed into with having these big humans on campus and the production and development that we've seen there. Texas needs to have that same kind of – you know, pathway on the, the defensive side of the ball. You got to have a continuation of guys getting on campus, getting their bodies right, and then obviously developing with their position coach. If that dries up, Texas could be in a pickle. Uh, you'd obviously like to have seen Jamari Caldwell join this Texas defense with the departures of Troll Carter, Tavondre Sweat, and Byron Murphy. He commits to Oregon as a result of Bo Davis moving to LSU. Now Texas is still in the market for a defensive lineman, and there could be even more attrition in the 2024 class. Texas continues to be, you know, in a need for continual good development on the trenches, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. This has to be a spot that becomes a strength, continues to be a strength, and something that cannot dry up, as we've seen uh, a few spots open up uh, for the 2024 Texas defensive line. Be interesting to see if anybody jumps in the portal from a Washington or an Alabama. Uh, I guess Washington can't anymore, but Alabama still. Anybody who changed coaches, I guess Washington can because they change coaches too. Uh, anybody jumps into the portal that might be a possibility for the Longhorns uh, from those groups because they certainly both have guys, particularly Alabama, that the Longhorns would probably like. All right, yeah. now that's going to do it for the quick update today. CJ, I appreciate your time, bud. Uh, thanks for going out there and checking out KJ Lacey and talking to him. Uh, and we will be back tomorrow morning. I'm Bobby Burton and for KJ, uh, CJ Vogel, uh, we appreciate your time. Hook them. Congrats to, to Coach Sarkeesian uh, through 2030 with the uh, contract extension.